Welcome to the Free Dive Cafe, episode 23, with Sayuri Kinoshita. My name is Donny, I'm the host of the Free Dive Cafe. The Free Dive Cafe is long form interviews that get into the backstories, the training, the challenges, the passions, the fears and personal philosophies of the world's free divers. The Free Dive Cafe can be found at freedivecafe.com. You can find Sayuri's show notes there and access to all the previous interviews. Okay, today I'm gonna keep this bit short. The Free Dive Cafe depends on donations to keep the lights on. You can donate in a few ways. First of all, you can sign up for a Patreon at patreon.com slash freedivecafe and donate a few dollars a month to the show. You can also click on the Audible banner, which can be found around the website. Sign up for a free 30-day trial there and get a free audiobook, and that also helps out the show. If you would like to send a single donation of any amount, that can be done through PayPal, or if you're in touch with the future of money, you can also send Bitcoin to the show. Details can be found on the website. Every donation, regardless of size, is greatly appreciated and I send my love in return. So tomorrow is the big day for me. After months of saving and preparing and dreaming of freedom from my day job, it's time to take the next step in my development as a free diver and I'm flying to Indonesia returning to the Gili Islands and ultimately, it is hoped, successfully completing my IDA instructor course. I won't be leaping straight into that, however. First, I'll be returning to Freedive Gili on Gili Trawangan, where I did my very first freediving courses about a year and a half ago. I'm giving myself two weeks there to decompress from city life and gently ease myself back into a life of daily diving. After that, I'll take a short boat ride over to Gili Air, where I'll be joining the crew of Free Dive Flow to do a three-week master's program and ultimately finish up with the IC. But don't worry, although I will be away for seven weeks, I have recorded all the interviews we need and they will still be coming out roughly 10 days apart. We won't be skipping a beat here at Free Dive Cafe. While I'm away, I'm going to continue to keep you guys updated on my own training through the blog on the freedivecafe.com website. I'll hopefully also be beginning my first foray into the world of Free Dive Cafe videos and beginning to develop the YouTube channel. So you can expect to see my toothless mug for real in the coming weeks as I share my experiences in Indonesia with you. We'll see what happens. My first priority is to chill out for a week and do nothing but dive. And then we'll see what happens after that. On today's episode, we have Sayuri Kinoshita. Sayuri was born in 1988 in Japan. Her parents have been running a swimming school in Nagasaki since she was three years old, and she has a bit of a background in competitive swimming. She began freediving after seeing fellow Japanese freediver Hanako Hirose in a magazine. She attended her first world championships in Serbia 2013 and started depth training in 2014. She went to vertical blue in that same year and already broke two Japanese national records. But it was in 2016 at vertical blue when she made huge waves, breaking the world record in no fins with a huge 72 meter dive. Let's listen to Sayuri as she shares some of her thoughts and feelings about her free diving life. Let's dive. Okay, so tell us, where, where are you from, Sayuri? I'm from Nagasaki in Japan. I was born in Nagasaki. Mm -hmm. But now I'm living in Okinawa. Okay. So did you move to Okinawa to get closer to some good water to dive in? Yes. Yeah. I moved to only free dive. Right, yeah. 
Yeah, I live in Taiwan, so a lot of people mm. here go to Okinawa. Yeah,、um, yeah, many, many, many Taiwanese.、Yeah. And they tell me the water is really beautiful there. Yeah. So、uh, I saw. I think it was on、uh, Deeper Blue.、Uh, there、mm -hmm. was a there was a quote from you. It was three years ago. I saw Hanako Hirose on、yeah. the cover of a magazine. Yes. It was a beautiful free diving photo, and I thought to myself,、mm -hmm. I want to do that. So I went to、mm -hmm. her free diving shop, and that's、mm -hmm. when Hanako became my first mentor. So、yes. is this your first your first experience of、uh, free diving? Was seeing this magazine, and then you met Hanako? Yes, that was my first time to to know about free diving. Right. So tell us about Hanako Hirose and what happened after you met her. Hanako, ah.、Uh, I tried only static at that time. It was in, in winter, so I did only static. But she she was really good to everyone, and so I really and wanted to continue to free dive. Right.、Mm. Do Do you have a background in swimming? Yes, my parents are swimming instructor, so. I started, I started swimming when I was a little baby. Uh huh. And were you also a, a competitive swimmer? Did you swim in competitions in、yes. Japan? Yes. Yeah. Uh、mm、huh. -hmm. And to so,、yeah. did you go to quite a high level with the swimming? Not not so much. Only in my hometown. When when was your first experience of、um, free diving in the open water? Uh, did you take a free diving course? Take yeah the 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 first level of free diving in October in two thousand thirteen. I I went to see Ryuzo. Do you know Ryuzo? Uh yeah, Ryuzo Shinomiya. Ryuzo. Yes, yes, yes. And I took my first course of open water. And was that like an Ida course or something? Yeah, Ida two star. I think the first time that people really became、uh, aware of you was when you went to Vertical Blue in two thousand and fourteen, and you broke the、um, the Japanese national record. Ah、uh, yes, yes. In、yeah. no fins. In no、um, fin and free immersion. And、well. free immersion also okay.、Mm. And your no fins dive was to fifty eight meters. Fifty eight. Yeah. Did you? Was that an easy dive for you at the time? Just one year after you started,、um, or not even one year after you started free diving? It was not so easy, but but fifty eight was not so not too too hard for me at that time. Is do you think that your background in swimming has given you a big advantage in the no fins discipline? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And is that just about technique? Mm, technique, yeah. So in two thousand and fifteen, you actually、mm -hmm. you won Vertical Blue. So just one、yeah. year later,、mm -hmm. and you got a new national record, just a couple of meters、uh, deeper in no fins. Tell us about Ryuzo and how did he help you、um, progress in your diving? He taught me how to dive deep. I I went to bah Bahamas with him, so he. Was always with me and taught me everything about competition. So you had some advantage because you were a swimmer before. When you first started free diving, was、mm -hmm. there something that was very difficult for you about free diving? You know, some people have problems with equalization. Some people have problems with anxiety, things like this. I think I think I had no problem with equalization, but I it's not easy to. To sometimes I was scared about to go deep, so it's difficult to make my mind relax and calm. So maybe just a little bit、uh, anxiety. What is it? What is、uh, the free diving scene like in Japan? Ah,、uh, not not popular in Japan, but getting getting popular. I think getting more popular. Yeah.、Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you you live in Okinawa now. Are you also teaching there? Yes, in only summer season. Uh huh.、Mm. 
So is there, uh, do you have a school there or is that uh, Hanako's school? Is that also there? This year we we did together, but we have no something like school or shop. We are doing ourselves. Right. So you just put the uh, the buoys into a car and drive yeah, down yeah, to the yeah. shore or something like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, mostly I train in 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 Philippines with Stefan. Right. You train in the Philippines mostly with yeah. uh, Stefan at yeah. Freedive Pang Lao. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so how often do you get to do that? In winter season, so December to February every year. So you currently hold the Ida world record in no fins. In no fins, yeah. yes. And you were the first rec- first woman to break Natalia Molchanova's mm, yeah, record, so. mm. um, which was set in 2012. So it's quite an old record already. Mm. Um and the first Japanese freediver, male or female, to hold a world record. That world record was a no fins dive to seventy two meters. How how did it feel to how did it feel that day to break the record? I was like not like not high. I was like uh I did it. Uh I'm so happy. Like I was really tired of uh, right after the diving. And I was really worried about my about to to did blackout right. because I did before I did in training. So yeah, I was really happy after my diving. Of course, mm. but you had some trouble during your training. You you blacked out on a on an yeah. attempt to seventy two meters. Mm. Mm. Was that something that happened uh, quite often? No, that was my first time. I felt I was tired and I was not not like nervous. I was really relaxed, but my body was really tired because I progressed from 60 to 72 every day. So Yeah, from 60 to 72 is a huge jump in uh, yes, no yes. fins. Yeah. So I mean what what kind of training did you do to make this possible? You said you trained mm. with uh Stefan from Free Dive yes. Pang Lao. Yeah. And um you said that, I think you said somewhere that Stefan created a program for you to follow. Could you tell us like what Stefan's program looked like? He advised me about the buoyancy because I didn't know about the like free about free fall or nature buoyancy at that time so really? yes so you're di- diving for world records but you didn't know about buoyancy yet about uh, not not so much i i i knew about that but my dive i i didn't know so he taught me my weight and he he make me my weight. He told me what depth I should stop for free fall and I should which depths I should do mouse feel about my When you say that he helped you with your buoyancy, was it that you needed to be heavier or that you needed to be lighter? I needed to be heavier. Right. Um uh, because until I dove sixty with nothing, I I couldn't do free fall. So I tried to do stop, try to stop to stop swimming. I needed to stop swimming. Right. So you were just you were too light. So you were swimming too mm. far when you were going yeah, down. Yeah. So. Yeah. You couldn't start your free fall, but then did you find it? Did you find it so much more difficult when you started to come back up because you were heavier? Mm, yeah, I thought so, but mm, it became more harder on the way up. But that was not not so not so big problem for me. What other kind of training do you do for uh, free diving? Do you do things like? Uh, weightlifting or running or yoga or stretching something like this to mm. help your training only swimming in the pool i don't do 
yoga or running, nothing. Just swimming and diving. Yeah, just swimming and diving. Well, it seems like it's working for you. Watching uh, you, this year at the um, the World Championships in Rotan, you took a, mm. another gold medal. Yeah. Um, how was your experience of the World Championship this year? Mm, it was not so easy because I had cold before the competition, so my sinus was not not good. So I I was like. I thought that I, I, I couldn't make my dive before my dive. Right. So I, th but I think that's why I, I could relax. <laughs> right. Yeah. You thought it wasn't going to work. So you just relaxed. Yeah. So did you have a problem with your, uh, like your, your, your nasal sinuses? Like you couldn't yeah, equalize yeah. properly? It wasn't not working sometimes, but I, yeah, I, I thought about, to cancel my dive, but when I thought also, also many many friends could see real time, but with with dive eye, I thought I couldn't cancel. Yeah, because I was watching your your dive from the world championships, mm. and you seemed to come back so strong and so clean. Mm, and yeah. Maybe it was just because you were so relaxed and you didn't think mm -hmm, it was going to mm -hmm. happen. Yeah. My my free, free merger dive was, I think that was the best dive in my life. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't feel contraction on the way up. But that was 3 and 30 dive time. Mm -hmm. It was quite long for me. Very clean and clear. After dive. What do you think about the dive eye? Dive eye. I like it. <laughs> because when I see the dive eye at the bottom, I, I could feel like behind the dive eye, there are many people to see me. To yeah. See me. Yeah. That so was really happy. So it's like, uh, it's really interesting. It's almost like mm. maybe you feel a little bit safer or mm. like you have somebody yeah. there with you when you see mm -hmm. the dive eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I really wanted to wave my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next time you have to good. take down yeah. some, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. take down a message on some paper. Or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. yeah. Say, hello, mom, something like that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> So do, do you think that there are, um, because this year at the World Championship, you saw, especially mm. in the men's uh, competition, you saw a lot of um, uh, red cards, um, yeah. blackouts and things like that. <laughs> yes. do, mm -hmm. you, do you think there's a problem with the, 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 the freediving mm. culture or the IDA mm -hmm. competition? Yeah, I think so. It, it was, yeah, blackout is not good. Especially for someone who don't really know about freediving. They will think freediving is very dangerous. We, we should try to not do blackout, especially in competition. Do you think that it would be a good idea to change the IDA rules so that mm. if you have a blackout, you are mm -hmm. disqualified from the competition? Yeah, I, I think something like that. So what is, um, what is like a, a typical day for you? You know, what does a Sayuri do most days when you wake up? How does it start for you? Make a tea. I try to make my body warm. So I take hot tea or hot water in the morning yeah i'm i think like uh, i think our weather is quite similar here in okinawa mm -hmm. and uh, taiwan mm -hmm. and i noticed that this weekend is like the first weekend where i start to mm -hmm. feel a little bit cold do you mm -hmm. have the same thing yeah and we have typhoon now yeah you have it worse <laughs> yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah we got a lot of wind yesterday i think it was from the typhoon passing so what is what is the the rest of your day like like uh how do you spend your time if you are not teaching courses what do you do when the weather is good i go to swim 
to the ocean with my friend in my hometown or in Tokyo. I maybe I do nothing in my room. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just, sitting, just to be lazy. <laughs> yeah. Just a very lazy person yeah. drinking tea. Yeah. Waiting yes. for the next competition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. During the competition, I do like that in my room. Just lay down and be lazy. Okay. <laughs> so you're a lazy person. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what kind of tea do you like to drink, by the way? Uh, the, uh, the blend Chinese tea, like mm -hmm. kind of kind of medicine. Mm -hmm. Medicine tea. I like Chinese uh, medicine I I, tea. Yeah. My friend choose for me, for my body. So she understands the uh, how the tea will help your body. Yes, 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 yes. She's, do you know, like something like, what uh, do Needle. Mm -hmm, like acupuncture? She put, put needle. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, she's so she knows about my body. Yeah. Right. Mm. Right, because you know everybody wants to know why you're such a great free diver, but if you're such mm. a lazy person, then <laughs> maybe maybe it's just the tea. <laughs> so if we can get the tea, it's going to be really uh -huh. easy. We just have to drink the tea, and then we can dive to seventy meters. No, problem, no problem. Yeah, tea is good, <laughs> but you need to choose the right kind of tea. Yeah, and you you have to know about your your body. I think I I know I know about my my body. So do you try to keep your body nice and healthy? Like do you do you try to eat? Uh, like what about your nutrition? Do you have like a certain things that you you think you really helps you in your diving because you eat a certain way? Do you have a, a diet? Ah uh, yes, I try to I try to eat try to eat many vegetable and vegetable fishes growing. Where I am. Mm -hmm. So local, 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 produce. yes, yeah. local and fresh. So you have like a, do, do you also eat meat and fish? I don't eat meat. I, I, I eat, but sometimes I eat meat. Like not every day. Not every day. Yeah. I like beans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I always have like two kinds of beans in my uh, nice. fridge. Uh, in Bahamas, we have to cook every day. Uh -huh. I try to use beans every every meal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I really love lentils too. Like the, ah, yes, me too. The red ones are so easy to cook and so tasty. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. And in Okinawa, do you have lots? Because I think it's quite, you know, the weather is quite good there for a lot of mm. the year. So do you have a lot of good local fresh vegetables and yeah. fruits? Yeah, yeah. Mm. So it, it's easy to spending Okinawa for me. Mm -hmm. And then, so when you go to, like when you go to free dive Pang Lao in the, mm. in the, uh, in the winter season, do you then mm. start to train really hard for free diving? Do you train every day? And do you dive deep very often? Not, not every day. I do training three day and one day rest. Right. For two day training and one day rest. And at the beginning of my training, I start to dive around 30, 40, and then get getting deeper. Mm -hmm. Slowly, mm -hmm. slowly getting slowly. deeper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you say you, you start around 30, 40 meters, is that, is that in all the disciplines or is that just in no fins? No, 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 no. Or. All, discipline. all the disciplines, right? So mm. the, the, just any diving you do, you start at 30 to 40 and then you go from there. Yeah, but the co constant weight is easy to easy to dive. So in training, I do constant weight. And what is your your favorite discipline? My favorite? Yeah. <laughs> My favorite discipline. I like three of them, but... Uh, yeah, I like nothing. Yeah, you're pretty good at that too. <laughs> have you ever had? Um, have you ever had like some kind of? I mean, you said you had blackouts before. Have you ever had some 
injury like lung squeeze or some other kind of accident in the water? When I tried to get around 50, when I tried to uh, get my dive 50, I get sometimes squeeze. Not lung, I think. The, the trachea. trachea. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, I didn't relax my dive. So uh, the first times, the first times that you were coming to around fifty meters, you had this problem. Mm. Mm, yeah, and when I when I started to exhale dive, I didn't know that much about that, so I exhaled too much. Right. So mm, I had trachea squeeze as well around ten meter. So do you do um do you do like uh. So you mean like FRC? Mm. Do you do FRC as part of your, your warm-ups? Yes, I, right. I do. Mm -hmm. But when you first started to do it, you were just really exhaling like all the air yeah, from your lungs? Yeah, right? because I didn't know about that. <laughs> and Stefan told me, don't do that. <laughs> so about the trachea squeeze, do you think that was just a relaxation, an issue of relaxation? Yeah, I think so. Relaxation and body position. And body position. What kind of body position would make a trachea squeeze more likely? To see, to look at the bottom. Right, if you put your more... head up, if you look up. Yeah, head right. up. That's not good. Yeah, I have some friends who I dive with and I think I tell them every time, or I, I used to tell them every time to, to stop looking down mm, when they dive, yeah, but they yeah, just yeah, don't yeah. listen to me. But beginners really want to see the bottom mm. what do you think are the the biggest um mistakes that beginners make when they first start to free dive or what problems do you see most often equalization they try to keep diving after when they feel they feel pressure but they they want to keep diving i i always tell them if you feel pressure and you cannot equalization, stop diving and you have to come up. Yeah, yeah, it's very hard though for the beginners to uh, resist the temptation to keep going, keep going. And I think some some beginner free divers they expect that the uh, the pain or the mm. the strong pressure is like a maybe like a natural part of the dive yeah, in yeah, the beginning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. So it's not easy to stop diving. So tell us, um, what is your favorite gear? What kind of wetsuits do you like to use and what kind of fins do you like to use? Uh, my wetsuit is Mobis. Mobis, do you know? Mobis Japan. Maybe you have it in Taiwan. Yeah, well. yeah, I, yeah, I know the one. Mobis. Yeah. Mm. Monofin is I'm using power fin and by fin is Setoma, many Chinese. Uh, they are using yeah the setma fins are really popular here in taiwan yeah. too yeah yeah in asia yeah I, see, I go to the water sometimes there's like a lot of like people they just like diving to like five or ten meters you know but they're all swimming around with these uh setma ex mm. very expensive <laughs> setma fins yeah <laughs> but it looks good on the instagram right yes instagram many <laughs> instagram in Okinawa too. And I'm using yeah, I'm using the Google from Ken. Ken Kiriyama. Mm -hmm. Ken Kiriyama's um what is that? Google. Oh the goggles, the, right. The the fluid, the fluid goggles. Google. Right. Mm. And when you when you wear these fluid goggles, do you find that um do, is the vision as good as a mask? Mm, yeah, I think so. That's really nice. Mm. No stress. Yeah, I, I just got some fluid goggles, but um mm. I don't know, maybe I'm just not wearing them in the best way, but I just feel, I feel like I'm uh, sick or something, like I'm, oh. you know, they're pushing against my eyes too, so it feels mm. really, it uh, uh, feels a bit scary. Yeah, I think so, because I, 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 I would, I'm used to the normal goggle because I, I would swimmer, so it's not stressful for me. Have you done much traveling around the world? Do you have any favorite places to dive? Roatan. That was my first time this year, but I really like Roatan. Very warm and clear. And do you also like the uh, the local life there, the island itself? Yeah, many fresh fruits 
and people are really warm. And what about other places that you've been? Do you have any other favorites? Bahamas. Blue Hole is very special for me. Of course, yeah, you got your yeah. world record there, right? <laughs> but the darkness, it's... Uh, I have to get used to too. And yeah, it can be a little bit scary, yeah? Yeah, it takes me a long time to get used to it. Because in Okinawa, it's very clear and light. In Philippines also. Who, who are the people uh, Who are the people that inspire you the most? I would like to say Hanako, Hanako Hirase. She's always enjoying free diving. Everyone around her seem to be very happy and very mm, enjoying so when i when i saw her the first time i really wanted to be like her right <laughs> she's like a role model for you yes do you think that free diving for you is is it just like uh something for fun or is it like uh do you see it as a sport or is it even something a bit more like uh, spiritual for you or a mixture? Um, mostly, I do free diving for fun because I really want to enjoy my free diving life. But in competition or something like that, I really want to win. So then it becomes more like a, a sport, competitive sport for you. It becomes more serious. Sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, but mostly it's for for fun. And I want to share the happiness from freediving. Many people, I want to share. And will you? Um, how will you share with people? Like to uh, to teach more courses? Yes, teach and fun diving as well. So when are you coming to Taiwan? to fun dive here yeah we have some nice water here too you should come and visit oh nice i really want to go yeah well you're always welcome to uh come and visit me and i'll take you to uh my local dive spots nice when is the season winter is <clears throat> not good um actually it's uh yeah we, we i think we're a bit the weather is a bit better here in okinawa um mm. actually the, the place i dive is called um Shaoliocho, which means little Okinawa in in uh, Taiwan. Uh, but you can dive most of the year. But I would say, you know, between March and October, November, it's it's good, you know. You know, the visibility and the, uh, the, the water conditions, they actually can be better in the wintertime. But maybe just the water gets a little bit cold. But the condition is good, still good. Yeah, pretty winter? good. Oh, nice. We can only the the problem is we can only really get um a, maybe forty five fifty meters from the shore here unless we have a boat we can't go further but uh yeah <laughs> I, I don't have a boat yet. Okay, we have to swim. Yeah, but it's no problem for me. It's no problem for you. It's a big problem for me. Yeah. <laughs> so what is uh, are you planning to go to um Pang Lao this winter season? Yes, from Christmas to at the end of uh, February. And are you also going to be teaching some courses there too? Yes, yes, for Japanese. Uh huh. Mm. So if there's any Japanese listeners listening now, they want to do a course with you, they can see you in Pang Lao over the winter season. And after Pang Lao, is it then on to Vertical Blue? I think. Uh, the first competition will be Caribbean Cup in May, and and Vertical Blue will be in Ju June or July. And will you be taking part in? You'll be taking part in both those competitions. Yeah, mm. yeah. And will you take to. part in any other competitions next year too? World Championships team, World Championship. <clears throat> what are your plans for the the future? What is uh? Sayuri going to do over the next five ten years? Do you have any idea, or is it just uh, mm. each day check and see? Mm, I don't know, but I want to keep joining the competitions, and I want to improve my my records, and I also keep teaching. Well, I wish you all the best in your. Uh, in your competition career, I'll be mm. closely watching to see how you do and hope that you mm -hmm. <laughs> keep uh, keep achieving amazing dives like mm. the one that you did 
Mm. Uh, the Vertical Blue last year. It's very inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Do you, uh, if people want to uh, find you, where can they find you? Like, uh, do you have a website, Facebook, Instagram, things like that? I have, yeah, I have Facebook page, official page, mm -hmm. and I have Instagram. I have home home page as well, but it's not not ready. Not ready yet. See, so, yeah. Mm. Uh, so you're building a website, but it's not. Uh, yeah, not. Active. Not ready. Mm. Mm. So if people just go to Facebook and Instagram and put in your name, they can find you easily. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, mm -hmm. I'll link to those pages in the show notes for this episode. Mm -hmm. So it makes it nice mm -hmm. and easy. Nice. Um, yeah. Just um, I'd also like to ask you, uh, do you have any uh, books or authors that you would like to recommend to the the, the listeners i mean since you're such a lazy person i think maybe mm. you spend some time reading no i don't read no. <laughs> mm. just the tea mm. i like to to write uh -huh. my thoughts so mm. right I so like you keep a write. journal or a diary mm. so maybe one day we can read your your thoughts. Thank you so much, uh, Sayuri, for mm. joining us and talking about your diving. I think it's uh, you're a very inspiring diver, super strong. It's really amazing to watch you, uh, especially now with the dive eye. We can see just how strong your dives are. And uh, good luck with the competitions next mm. year. Good luck with Thank everything. Thank you very much. I hope you have a lovely day in Okinawa. It's also mm. morning there. So enjoy the mm. rest of your day. Enjoy your tea. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go to my uh, Chinese doctor and try and get some good tea now. Maybe that's, uh -huh. maybe that's yeah, a secret. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we can talk again sometime. Yes. Thank you very much for your time. And bye-bye. Have a good time. Bye-bye. That was Sayuri Kinoshita. She's just across the water from me and I hope to get her out here to Taiwan someday and show her the beauty of the waters here and maybe even get her to bring some of that special tea. Thanks to everyone who listens. I love you all. Sending you big love through the airwaves. We'll meet again when I'm settled in Indonesia. In the meantime, if you ever have any questions or suggestions, feel free to contact me through the contact page on the website. You can also add me on Facebook where I am Donnie Mac, D-O-N-N-Y-M-A-C, and on Instagram as Donnie McFar, D-O-N-N-Y-M-C-F-A-R. Don't forget to subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode. And of course, as always, dive safe.